Well, hello. Um, I'm going to get straight into this particular clip because it's all about flavours. Now, I've had lots of emails over many years about what goes into a carp flavour, what goes into a barbel bait flavour. Why are they good? Do they matter? Is it all hype? So I'd like to try and dispel some of those myths today. I'm going to keep this fairly brief and fairly to the point. So what makes a good flavour? First of all, what I'd like to do is explain about wine. We all like a nice glass of wine. And you think, well, what's that got to do with flavours that go in fish bait? Actually, it's got quite a lot. Because a wine has three parts to it. It has a nose, the top note. So when you smell your glass of wine, you get all the volatiles coming off, the grapes, the fermentation, how long it's been in the cask, the oak that it was stored in, etc. And all the fancy names that people say, oh, that's, you know, smells of oak vats, it smells of cherry blossom in spring and all the rest of it. So they're the top notes. And then you have the middle notes, the taste. So that when you actually taste the wine or when the fish tastes the flavour, they get the actual real taste of it in their mouth. And then you get the depth. So the after note, when you, in, 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 in wine terms, when you've swallowed the wine, it's, you can get all the volatiles coming back through your nose. So there are three parts to a flavour. And how do you create this and why does it matter in a carp bait? Well, it does matter in a carp bait because what, what we do when we use a, a food flavour in a bait is we abuse it. We mix it with smelly ingredients. We mix it with all sorts of different things. We, we put it into a freezer. We boil it. We do horrible things to really sometimes quite good quality food products which aren't made to go in carp bait. So what's happened over the years is they've gone through a metamorphosis, these flavours, and some of them have been created not for bait, for human consumption, and by luck some of them have been found to be useful in bait. But in actual fact, the really good ones that are used in bait have to be quite expensive. And the reason they have to be quite expensive is because they contain better quality aroma ingredients. So what are aroma ingredients? Those are the ingredients that go into make up a flavour and the better quality the aroma ingredient, the better quality the final flavour. The more resilient it is to boiling, mixing, freezing and being treated like we treat it in a carp bait. So I'll give you an example of how complex flavours are without making this video ridiculously technical because nobody wants to hear a load of technical stuff. So I'll give you an example of the most common flavour that is used in the world in food. It's used in food, in yogurts, in medicines, in sweets. It's used to flavour all sorts of different things and that's strawberry. And you might be surprised to hear that in a strawberry they have identified 360 different aroma components. So there are actually that many components that go into a strawberry. When you actually come to make a flavour with it, there are only 30 components that you can match cleverly by making them in a laboratory. And these have a classification. So when you come to a really good quality flavour, you could, using the example of strawberry, make a, fl a strawberry flavour which has six ingredients quite a lot of solvent, smells like strawberries, but doesn't behave very well in a bait. You could have uh, the same strawberry flavour that you think, because it comes from the same company, is a marvellous strawberry flavour, um, and, and it could just have four or five, this or that, different flavours, and none of the flavours, uh, ingredients, that are in flavour number one appear in flavour number two. So you can create a completely different flavour with the same name, strawberry, but none of the ingredients in one are the same as the other. Why? Because it's used in a different type of food. It's been designed perhaps to go into a soft drink, into a yoghurt where it's not boiled. Unlike um, a flavour, a strawberry flavour that would perhaps go into a, a boiled sweet which would have to be made to resist the boiling process. 
So when you look at what makes the difference between a flavour, that is about the most simplest way I can explain it. I don't know how easy that is to grasp, but it isn't just as simple as, oh, I'm on a strawberry flavour that I got from this bait firm or that bait firm or this manufacturer or that manufacturer. So when it comes to the categorisation of a flavour, um, it, it comes in three ways. It's artificial, it's nature identical, or it's natural. So it's NAT, ART, or natural. Um, NI, sorry, nature identical, let's get that right, the three, those three. So the best flavours that, that you can use for carp bait would be a combination of a natural flavour and a nature identical flavour. And these flavours have a categorisation which is called a FEMA number. And there's been a lot of discussion on the internet lately and in various chat rooms about fishing bait and whether they're you know, ever going to be used again because of Brexit and Brussels and EEC food regulations and all the rest of it. But providing the ingredients that are used in these flavours have a FEMA number, they're okay. So what's a FEMA number? FEMA is the Federation of Extracts and Flavour Association and it's created to protect and guard against malpractice by suppliers and to protect consumers. So you ask your, your manufacturer or your supplier, do they use flavours that have a FEMA number? And that's actually quite important. Um, they're also regulated by a, another company or an organisation which is the International Organisation of the Flavour Industry. And FEMA were one of the original creators of that organisation. So it's very well regulated and I think we in carp bait circles and uh, suppliers of carp bait, bait companies should be very mindful to use good quality ingredients in our flavours. For example, plum, which has been around for a long time, is a compliant flavour. It has its FEMA numbers and amazingly it has 35 ingredients. Um, I've actually bought the uh, international property bites, the plum flavour, which cost me quite a lot of money, so I own the recipe. As indeed I do own the recipe to a number of my flavours. So I don't knock on the door of a flavour manufacturer and ask them for this, that or the other type of flavour without knowing what's in it. I actually know what the exact recipe is to begin with because I've studied it for 40 years. And I know what works. Why? Because I've tested it and tested it and tested it. So that's really, really important. So I've laboured this point. I said I would be specific in previous videos. I said that we would be going down really hard on explaining what constitutes a good flavour. And that's what this clip is all about. Um, we'll now come on to another thing, which is I'll touch on something first before I talk about the sale of old flavours and what's happened. So um, on the internet, there's lots of stuff going on again, as I said a couple of seconds ago, um, but we'll just rewind. I just want to talk about pop-ups and inorganic ingredients that are used in them. So that's microspheres and silicon. So people use pop-ups with fluoro dyes in them, brightly coloured dyes and inorganic, inedible ingredients. I stopped selling these and making them about three years ago. I still get asked for them because they're very buoyant. Why are they buoyant? I'll tell you. Because the ingredients used to make 99% of all pop-ups sold in the world is an insulation material supplied by 3M and it's used to insulate underwater pipes that go under the sea, oil pipes and gas pipes. So we are actually putting an insulation material in a fish bait. So when you reel in, and you want to change your bait, you pull it off, what do you do with it? Do you always throw it away? No, you chuck it in the margins of the lake and a duck eats it. That duck, or the carp, is eating silicon, or it's called microspheres. I don't agree with it, and I think people should stop using it, which is why in previous videos I have said use organic base mix materials, a cork ball, which is obviously comes from a tree, it's the inner bark of a tree, it's natural, or cork dust, and that's what you should be making your pop-ups from. So we'll get that one out of the way. It's a bit controversial, but we'll get that one out of the way right now. And then we'll go into the last little aspect of this first clip, 
and that's Old Flavours. Here's an old flavour, it's one of mine. This particular one is a strawberry flavour, which uh, I no longer do because I'm happy with the fruit flavours that I've got at the moment. Incidentally, just on that note, in a few weeks' time, finally, after a lot of agonising, I'm bringing back my peach flavour. So look out for peach flavour, it's coming soon. So we'll, we'll go back to these. Um, I just want to talk about people that are selling old flavours, so Rod Hutchinson flavours, my flavours, whoever, was around a few years ago and had a bit of a name for selling good quality flavours. And certainly Rod, Rod's flavours were great. I used to work closely with Rod in the old days and uh, we both helped each other with flavours. So I'll come back to that later. There is no point in buying, and this is an important point, flavours which, and in this particular instance, if you see anything on the internet in these green bottles, they're over 15 years old. And the contents would have reacted with the, um, the actual material of the pot. In this case, this is PET. It's called PET. It's quite a stable product. And I'll talk about that in the next clip. Um, be careful buying old flavours. They're probably mildly toxic. They certainly have lost all their um, real power and proper taste because they would have oxidised. Um, and oxidised means that they've had contact with air, they've had contact with the plastic, and they've gone rancid. So don't buy them. Use fresh ingredients, use them new, and you'll catch more fish, and your bait will smell better. It's a gimmick, be careful. Um, so we'll finish that clip there. Um, what I've got to finish up on, well, you might have noticed I'm wearing a new hoodie. Um, this is something I thought I'd do for 2021. Um, they're available on my web shop now. Um, fairly understated, quite warm, double hood. Anyway, a little bit of advertising to finish that clip up on. And I'll see you in a few minutes to carry on where we left off. See you later.